In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the Gospel for today, we see the Pharisees getting mad at our Lord because he received the sinners. You may remember when our Lord was invited to the house of a Pharisee called Simon. And a sinful woman came and placed herself behind the Lord and washed his feet with tears of repentance. You remember, Simon was not happy. How can that be? How can Christ receive sinners? And yet, that was his mission. Because the Savior came to save what was lost, to fix what was broken, and to heal what was wounded. But sometimes we forget this truth, and we act like the Pharisees. We may become self-righteous and look down on people. We may judge them, thinking that we are better, that we are so much holier than the people around us. That's the voice of the little Pharisee that lives inside us. The truth is that we should never forget that we are among the sinners. My brethren, we are one of them. To consider oneself outside of the number of sinners is to place oneself outside of the plan of salvation. Because if we are not sinners, so Christ didn't come for us. It was because of our misery, because of our weakness, that the Son of God came into earth. Our misery it is what called upon us the mercy of God. And it was to teach us this truth that our Lord gave us the two parables that we see in the gospel today. The parable of the lost sheep and the parable of the lost growth or drachma. There are two figures, but only one reality. There is only one message behind these two parables. The message of the redeeming love of God, which came to save what was lost. So today we are going to take a look at the parable of the lost growth. Growth, drachma, are words that mean coin. So we are going to take a look at the parable of the lost coin. We read in the gospel what the Lord said. Which woman, having ten drachmas, Having ten coins, if she lose one drachma, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she find it. Which woman, having ten drachmas, if she lose one drachma, doth not light a candle, and sweep the house, and seek diligently until she find it. My brethren, these are the words of the Lord. So let us, let us now look for the spiritual signification of these words. The woman in the gospel represents the holy wisdom of God. In Greek, Hagia Sophia, the name of a famous cathedral. And in Latin, Sapientia Dei. The wisdom of God is the Son of God. 
The Son of God is the wisdom of God, through whom God created all things in heaven and on earth. So the woman of the gospel represents the wisdom of God, which is, who is, the Son of God. And it is written that the wisdom of God had ten drachmas, ten coins, which signify the totality of rational creatures. And by rational creatures, I mean creatures with reason, angels and men. And they are called drachmas because like a coin, they all have in themselves the image of the king. Angels and men have reason. And because of that, we say that they were created in the image of God. Angels and men were created in the image of God because we have reason. And the number of drachmas is ten, because there are nine choirs of angels. And to this number, we add mankind. So a woman had ten drachmas. But what else do we hear in the parable? My brethren, we hear that one coin got lost. One of the ten coins got lost, and we know very well which one. Mankind is the coin that got lost, my brethren. And it got lost when our first parents, Adam and Eve, sinned against God. Like a coin, mankind fell from the hands of God to the floor, from the state of grace to the state of sin. Mankind was lost. But God didn't forget that little coin. So what did the wisdom of God do in order to find the lost drachma? It is written that the wisdom lit a lamp. The wisdom lit a lamp. And these words hide a great mystery. A lamp is a light inside a material vessel. And in, this, and in this we can see a figure of the mystery of the incarnation of the Lord. When the light of the divinity came to dwell inside the material vessel of human flesh. The lamp was lit when God became a man. And that's how he came to look for us. And we read also that the wisdom comes and sweeps the house. Which means that our Lord comes to clean our lives from sin. The man who follows the words of Christ is like the one who sweeps his house and keeps it clean so he can see in himself the image of God. But the man who does not follow the words of the Master has his house full of dust. The image of God is like buried underneath all of this dust. But even in this last case, when someone doesn't follow the words of the Master, it is written that the wisdom of God does not cease to look for the, le for the lost coin. It is written that the wisdom of God seeks diligently for the drachma until she finds it. Which means that our Lord is always knocking at the door, seeking to, to save our souls. 
even the souls of the, of the most wretched men. He's always knocking. And if anyone comes to open the door and accept the plan of salvation of God, he will, he will one day be joined together with the nine choirs of angels in heaven. <clears throat> but if someone does not truly want to open the door, if someone does not accept the plan of salvation of God, My brethren, if someone professes his faith with words alone, while his actions remain the darkness of sin, and now I speak to you with the heart of a father who cares for your souls, if we profess our faith with words alone, if we continue to commit the same grave sins, over and over and over and over and over again without amending our lives. My children, if we continue to refuse the love of God, what will be of us? If we continue like that, we will be lost forever because we didn't want to be found. And hell is exactly this, the rejection of the love of God. <clears throat> so my brethren, let Christ find you in whatever situation you may be in your life. Let Christ find you and bring you back to his heart from where you should, not, you should never have departed. Yes, we were all like that lost drachma, but we should allow Christ to find us. So open the doors of your heart to the love of God and let Him do His work of salvation in your life. <clears throat> let, he, let Him clean your heart from all sin and make it a tabernacle for His presence. Yes, let God make your heart a tabernacle for His presence. Because, as St. Teresa of the Child of Jesus says, Our Lord didn't come down from heaven to dwell in a tabernacle of gold or silver. No. The goal is to dwell in the tabernacle of the flesh of our hearts. If He is there, is because he wants to be here. So when we receive Holy Communion, we become truly a tabernacle, a living tabernacle of Christ. So may we be a worthy tabernacle of the presence of the Lord. Because this is the entire goal of the plan of salvation. This is the entire goal of our lives, to have God right here at the center of our lives. And when He's here, my brethren, when He's here, there's nothing to fear, because we know that we are not lost anymore. When He's here, we know that we have been found. When our Lord is here, we have Him, and above all, He has each one of us in His hands, like a little coin. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.